Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD and Skincare Nerd. And today I'm going to be doing a routine review. A while ago, I broke down Pharrell Williams' skincare routine and a lot of you guys liked it. So today I'm going to be breaking down Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's skincare routine. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell or notification bell if you don't want to miss any videos. Here is a super quick rundown of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or AOC. She's a democratic socialist and her platform has a lot of things that sound to me like really sensible ideas like universal healthcare, free college, action on climate change. Now I don't really want to go too much into politics because I know what's going to happen in the comments. So if you want to argue with people, flame them, call them whatever, then go to other YouTube channels like ContraPoints. So more relevantly for this channel, she posted her skincare routine earlier this year, and so we're going to break it down. So this is from her Instagram stories. Her first step in her skincare routine is double cleansing. She says that if you wear makeup, you should double cleanse, and what you do is you cleanse with a balm or oil to melt off the makeup, then use a usual soapy cleanser to wash your skin. Now, I double cleanse in my routine. I find it really effective for removing makeup, and so I think this is a pretty good general piece of advice for most people. Double cleansing is probably going to help you remove makeup more efficiently, more gently, without freaking your skin out. So by usual soapy cleanser, I'm assuming she means a foaming cleanser. A lot of people are scared of foaming cleansers because in the past they used to always be really harsh and drying, but in the last 5-10 to 10 years, foaming cleanser technology has improved a whole bunch and so now you can get the foam without that harsh cleansing effect. I personally find that foaming cleansers are a lot more effective for me because you end up using a lot less product because it spreads over your skin much more easily. She says she also uses a face brush or makeup towel when she's being good. I don't really think you need a brush or a towel to cleanse your skin well. A lot of the time, if you're using these tools, they can stay damp, and if you keep them in the shower, then they can start growing mold, and that can be even worse for your skin. I do think they feel like they're cleansing more, but in reality, if you have a good double cleanse routine, if you have good products, then using a tool to wipe off stuff isn't really necessary. She also says that she sometimes just uses a nice face wipe before bed. We've all slept in makeup, the wipes are a really good place to start if this is a bad habit. Wipes in general aren't going to be as good at cleansing as a double cleanse, but in a pinch they can be quite useful. I personally really like Bioderma Sensor Bio Wipes, which I took on holidays with me. You might have seen that video. I also quite like Neutrogena's wipes as well. The only issue with wipes is that they're quite wasteful because each time you are throwing away a a whole wipe that is mostly made of polymers. She also says no alcohol in your wipes or any skincare product. Alcohol is not that bad for your skin. I've been meaning to do a podcast about the science behind this with my friend Steven who is a cosmetic chemist. It will happen. The short version is alcohol is not that bad for your skin. It might temporarily dehydrate your skin a little bit but there's no evidence that it does anything bad in the long term and it's really unlikely to as well. So why is alcohol in there if it's not doing anything good or bad? It is actually doing things that are good, it is making stuff spread better, it's making stuff maybe absorb better as well, depending on what the formula is. So step two in her routine is toner and actives. She says toner should not have alcohol in it, so there's more of this anti-alcohol stance, which I don't think is necessary. Um, it should be more nourishing, you can use plain witch hazel, there's lots of different kinds. I don't think a toner is really necessary in a routine, but it can help add a hydrating layer to your skin. Actives are basically serums with active compounds. In general, I think a serum should really have active compounds. If it doesn't have actives, it's not really a serum in my opinion, but definitions of all of these products types can change. Examples of active compounds are vitamin C and retinol, which are probably the two best ones, or at least retinoids. They should be in the layer closest to your skin after toner. That is a sensible order. Step three, moisturizer and sunscreen. Use the moisturizer that works with your skin. It should be personal, everyone's skin is different. Completely agree. You need to find a moisturizer that is suitable for your skin. Even if your skin is really oily and greasy, there will be a moisturizer that works for you if you need one. Some people don't even need one. If your skin is fine, if it's not dry or dehydrated or tight feeling, then maybe you don't need one. My skin is oily but it's dehydration prone so having a moisturizer really helps. If you want to find out more about choosing a moisturizer, the Lab Muffin Guide to Basic Skincare has a whole chapter on it. 
Then sunscreen, the most important thing, completely agree. Sunscreen is super important. It is the best anti-aging product that you can possibly buy. It's also anti-cancer as well, which is of course a bonus because who wants cancer? Not me. The other good thing about sunscreen is that if you're prone to hyperpigmentation, then it can help that fade. So things like acne masks will fade much faster if you're protecting it from the UV. She's been using daily sunscreen since she was 19. That is really impressive. It is a really good age to start. I think I started using daily sunscreen when I was maybe 25. But of course, the best time to start using sunscreen is now. Random other things. She experiments a lot with skincare and tools like face brushes, face masks, eye patches. Now with experimenting a lot with your skin, I don't think this is a good idea if you have sensitive skin, but it sounds like she's worked out what works for her skin and she can experiment within those bounds. She considers her approach a blend between K-beauty and scientific consensus, probably my approach too. There are a lot of really fun products in Korean beauty, but I think sometimes it is a bit gimmicky and sometimes the science just isn't there to support some of the products. It is fun though, and it does tend to be reasonably cheap. So if you enjoy it, then do it. Her mom taught her not to touch her face or rest her face on her open hand, which is again, really good advice if you are acne prone. She also says that diet impacts a lot. She kept breaking out, she cut out dairy and her skin issues went away. Dietary advice is really difficult. From the studies, it looks like different things will probably work for different people and it's so variable. Dairy is one of the things that's been more studied, but the results are quite conflicting. So for example, lower fat dairy seems to be worse for acne in one study. It's really inconclusive. She says, skincare is straight up a hobby of mine. I'm a science nerd and I truly enjoy the science of it. Reading about compounds and studies, it's like that. Hi, if you're watching. She keeps wipes next to her bed and at the very least she wipes off her makeup. This is good advice. I would also recommend maybe using a micellar water with reusable cotton pads if you want to be a bit more environmentally friendly. She says, when it comes to makeup, don't use more than you need. You should incorporate double cleansing or a makeup towel or face brush if you use it so you can totally clear your skin at the end of the day. Let your skin breathe. I do think this will prevent breakouts, but not really because your skin needs to breathe. It's simply, statistically speaking, if you're using less products on your skin, then you're going to encounter less ingredients that might break you out or ingredient combinations that break you out. She does talk about makeup as well, and I think it's really refreshing to see someone in a position of power who shows that you can have time in your day to do things like makeup as well as be awesome and political and fight for people's rights. So my overall rating of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's skincare routine is an A triple plus. It's pretty much the best celebrity skincare routine I've ever seen. All the advice is going to probably work for most people. It's also really detailed and most of the time when a celebrity goes into a detailed routine, there's some really dodgy stuff there, but there's nothing super dodgy at all. If you like this video, you can also leave me a comment letting me know who else's skincare routine you want me to critique. Also give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, all of that really helps. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. See you next time for more nerdy talk about skincare and beauty.